All right, I got to get everybody's titles right. Donna Love is a program officer at NIAID. Thank you very much. Sure. Get rid of this and this. And is that you? Yep, I think that's not my first slide, though. Probably not since it says three there. Okay, okay there. perfect. <laughs> All right. Okay, so thanks very much um, to the organizers for, for inviting me and for the National Academies for hosting this terrific meeting, and to you all for hanging in there um, to the end. It's my pleasure to sort of round out this terrific session. Um, so my name is Donna Love. I'm a program officer at NIAD, and for those of you that don't know me, um, a program officer, I manage the portfolio of invasive fungal diseases at NIAD, and in particular, um, Valley Fever. So today I'm going to give an update on the NIAD strategic plan for research to develop a Valley Fever vaccine. And before we jump into the strategic plan, what I want to do is just touch a little bit on the Valley Fever portfolio. Um, there's been some really exciting um, development in the portfolio in the last four or five years, and I just wanted to highlight that because it's really due to the hard work of the folks, many of the folks in this room. So currently we have 30 funded projects, um, over $30 million in um, uh, supporting these projects. Um, and I want to point your attention to um, the areas in which these projects are located. Um, the majority of these are in the endemic areas, which I think is very important for this disease. And then finally, um, currently we have seven R01s, which are the large um, research grants that NIH is known for, 12 R21s, which are the smaller ones, and then four of these U19s that you all have heard about throughout the meeting. And so just for perspective, um, in 2016, um, there was only one R01 in Valley Fever, and now it's up to seven. And so again, I just want to congratulate everyone on the hard work and, and just all the momentum that's going on in this field. And so um, I want to show you a different sort of snapshot of the portfolio and, and how um, the kinds of research um, that are going on with, within the COXI portfolio. So you can see here that um, about half of the research is what we would call basic research. Um, and then the rest of it is divided rather evenly between vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. And so I think this is a really terrific apportionment of, of the research, and, and it shows signs of being a very strong portfolio. Um, another thing that NIAD does and the way that we try to grow research areas is that we utilize um, these specialized program announcements, which we had one in 2019, and then we had the RFA um, just recently. And so these are tools that we utilize to um, um, highlight research areas that we think are a priority and to draw new folks into the community. And so um, I, I'm very, I'm just so proud of the, the community and it, it has worked. And so the, the portfolio is definitely growing. Okay, so now I'm gonna spend the next few slides talking about this um, strategic plan. NIAD was tasked with developing a um, strategic plan um, for research to develop a, a valley fever vaccine within 10 years. Um, so earlier this year, as you all probably know, we published a request for information to solicit um, community comments and suggestions. We, we didn't develop this plan in isolation. We wanted to engage all stakeholders. Um, and so I'll, what I'll show you on the next slide is that the strategic plan is really structured around three areas of research that we feel is vital to developing a, um, a vaccine for valley fever. And those areas are, um, of course, to understand coccidioides pathogenesis and um, the host response, um, develop more tools and resources to support um, coxie research, and then finally to advance strategies to really prevent um, and or treat valley fever. And so shown here is just a graphic of um, the priority areas that are listed in the strategic plan. Um, we did receive 13 responses from academia and industry, and those were considered very carefully and included in our strategic plan. And so together with those suggestions and then a NIAD working group, we came up um, with this um, uh, strategic plan. And so it was published September 15th. There's a hot link here. Um, if you haven't done so, I encourage everyone just to go and take a look um, at the plan. 
And so again, in priority area one, we want to um, encourage research and understanding the geographic spread of, of this disease, the life cycle of the pathogen, as well as understanding pathogenesis, virulence, and of course the host immune response. As we've learned the last two days, there are still a lot of gaps in those areas. And then priority two is to develop tools and um, resources to support um, vaccine development. And of course, that would include diagnostics, um, animal models, new animal models, like we've heard um, just in this session alone, as well as reagents, and then of course, clinical capacity. And then priority area three is really um, sort of the meat of it, and then that would be to develop um, and advance a vaccine. And so of course, we need um, vaccine development and then um, uh, clinical testing. And so um, some other features that are included in the strategic plan is that we did develop a target product profile characteristics. So you sort of need an idea of where you want to go in order to get there. And so we provided some suggestions for an optimal um, vaccine, which is shown here. And then we've also provided benchmarks. Um, developing a vaccine in 10 years is really um, quite a Herculean um, effort. And so benchmarks will be essential in order to get there. And what I want to draw your attention to here is that um, it, you can see that the, the COXI centers, these U19s, were um, awarded in 2022. And NIAD has committed to um, renewing these U19s for 2027. And so in the renewal, these will be a bit more focused on vaccine development, of course. And so just listed here are the various um, benchmarks. And you can see that the, the community is really already um, is working on these and is starting to achieve some of these, such as structural characterization of candidate antigens, uh, preclinical testing and animal models, um, refined diagnostic testing to enable efficient vaccine trials, and then, of course, the more um, preclinical work, such as manufacture pilot lots for clinical trials and um, clinical trial testing. And so I want to spend the next few slides just educating you all about some of the services um, and supports that NIAD has to support, you know, both vaccine development and the greater community at large. And these are also listed in um, the um, strategic plan in Appendix 4. And they're all hot linked in that, um, in that document. And so these are services that NIAD provides that are independent of our grant mechanism. They're free. They're in-kind services to the community. You don't have to have an active grant to get them. They're available to um, academia, industry, governmental agencies. And so just a sort of selection of those are, sh oops, oops, are shown here, such as um, we do have phase one clinical trial units to, to test potential vaccines and therapeutics. We have um, preclinical models of infections. We do animal model testing, MICs, et cetera. So again, I would encourage everybody to go here and check those out. And then finally, just another way to list these resources um, is shown here, and we will do synthesis, manufacturing, efficacy studies, as I mentioned earlier. We do non-clinical studies, in vitro, ADME profiling, et cetera. And then we also um, help with documentation and planning support for when you are um, beginning your um, package to, to interact with the FDA. So if you're interested in any of these services, you can contact me, or we do have um, preclinical program managers that, that help you navigate this process and their contact information is here on the slide. And then finally, I'll just end by saying thanks very much. And I just want you all to know that it's not just me supporting you, that you have a whole team at NIAD um, that has um, expertise not only in basic science, but in diagnostics, vaccines, and again, in the, the preclinical um, path. So with that, I'll say thank you and happy to take questions.